Hi, I'm Nick Gillespie. This is Matt Welch. We're doing Ask a Libertarian 2012. We're celebrating the paperback release of the Declaration of Independence later at the month. Matt, here are your lightning round questions. David Woolley via Facebook says or asks, are democratic measures such as citizens' initiatives and the right to recall sufficient safeguards against political corruption? Certainly not sufficient, but I like them. I enjoy them as a, a, a citizen of the West, or at least I was born and raised in California. It's a great way to do things like put on the ballot, as we see this November in Colorado and Washington, full legalization of marijuana, or, or some initiatives that go outside of the kind of partisan gridlock. And it's fun to recall uh, corrupt and incompetent governors like Gray Davis, which is my favorite activities in the voting booth, but it's not nearly enough to tackle corruption. Uh, Vakil Smolin asks, what do you think of the Cass Sunstein nudge approach to Big Brotherdom? Uh, Cass Sunstein, Richard Thaler wrote a book a few years back called uh, Nudge, uh, which sort of made the case for libertarian paternalism. If we just tweak policies in ways that create better kind of defaults towards people to make better choices, we'll all be better off. I'm skeptical of it, uh, mostly because of the design flaw of having regulators create the perfect design. Uh, I'm, I'm just uh, inherently skeptical of the ability of the regulatory process to create these kind of great uh, choice architectures for people. Uh, Cass Sunstein's in the Obama administration. He's effectively his regulatory czar. And he's gotten some good marks there, um, although we haven't really heard a, a much about this kind of nudge idea happening with a person who's as responsible for that type of, uh, of uh, governance as anyone. Uh, at, uh, via Twitter, uh, Pietro PC asks, do you worry you're just trying to signal something else? Boop. Mm. Pinky. <laughs> Pinky asks, uh, now that there's a Tea Party, who needs libertarianism? Uh, the Tea Party does, uh, among other things. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, interesting conversations, I think, between uh, long-time libertarians and uh, new-time Tea Party activists, uh, having conversations, hashing this stuff out. Rand Paul describes himself as basically a Tea Party Republican, even though he's, I think, much more of a libertarian or constitutional conservative. It's an ongoing discussion, and I think libertarians need to help that discussion along. Uh, I don't think the Tea Party itself is composed or comprised of libertarians, but they have talked about at least some fiscally libertarian goals out there, and so conversations need to keep going. Harvard uh, asks, why did most reason authors vote for Obama, and are they smarter now? The premise of your question is inaccurate. As far as I am aware, there are two current Reason staffers who voted for Obama. Tim Cavanaugh, if we can name and shame, he always discloses his ballot, and Ron Bailey. I should point out that most of us, I mean, Reason is one of the only publications in the universe that asks its staffers to disclose who votes. We do it, Slate does it, and basically nobody else does it. Um, that's two people out of a staff of uh, 18 or so last time around. Um, and uh, we published a, uh, uh, an interesting forum in uh, 2010 asking people, so do you, uh, who voted, for, libertarians who voted for Obama, do you have any regrets? What do you have to say about it? And I recommend everyone go and look, look it up. All right, thank you, Matt. Uh, Ask a Libertarian 2012, we're gonna be back with our final uh, segment. It's a very special segment called, What Did We Learn Today?